Hi, I'm Tony Fianaka from Sparks Florist. Today we're going to be talking about a couple of different design styles. We're going to talk about bud vases, uh, bunch vases, and full-size vases of different flower arrangements. And we're also going to talk about the importance of uh, making recipes and really how to do that. So the first thing I want to kind of draw your attention to over here, uh, we talk about two main categories in any type of business. And those two categories are either income or expense. Um, income is made out of two separate, uh, two different types of categories. We have uh, our income from product sales, which is basically like we made this arrangement and somebody wants to buy it and they take it out of our store. That's a product sale. Um, it's anything that comes from your inventory. And then our other income, which is the second category, and that one is actually derived only from services. So think about like when we have to go and deliver something. Um, that's not a tangible product, but it's a service. And so that's considered other income. Um, and we divide everything in those two classifications. And the reason why is because we don't want to have our numbers for all of our flowers and for all of our inventory to be uh, distorted by all of our service charges. So uh, you see a lot of times that people will, will divide all their numbers in, in that sort of fashion. Um, now the, the expenses, we kind of group into basically two different uh, categories. We have our COGS, um, or the other term for it is cost of goods sold. And that basically just means uh, what was the actual cost for us to make one of these arrangements. So like for example, in this little bud vase here, we have a couple different elements and each one of them have a separate price. So what we would do is we would count each of those prices separately for what it cost us the business and that gives us our total cost of goods sold. That's how much we actually had to pay to make this. And then our second category is called operating expenses. And operating expenses, it's everything from the buildings to the buckets to the, keeping the power on, um, also paying for labor and things of that sort. So uh, think of it as kind of everything other than uh, your actual cost of goods sold or your COGS um, for your arrangements. Alrighty, so uh, to kind of show how we would do something like this, how we would actually go through and recipe an arrangement, um, we want to be really rigorous about this. We want to make sure that we're always charging the right amount of money. I'm going to put this up here. We want to make sure we're always charging the right amount of money for each arrangement that we actually produce. And the way we do that is we look at all those costs like I was showing you earlier, and we figure out basically what is our break even. And, and if you noticed on that previous little slide I had for you, um, we talk about if we add up all of our income and we subtract out all of our expenses, we have either a net income or a net loss. And it's very possible that you could you know, lose money uh, doing any type of business. So we wanna make sure that doesn't happen. And in fact, we wanna make profit. So the way we do it is with these recipes. And you can see here what, what I've done is I've actually recipied out this arrangement here on the left. Um, and it's an arrangement of gladiolas, larkspur, and some solidago in this really pretty uh, gold and cream colored container. And what I've done is I've gone through and for every single one of the items, I've listed how many went into the actual arrangement, what their retail cost was to our customer, and then I multiplied out and found the subtotal. So for example, I have one vase at $35, so one times 35 is $35. And I continue this process through with every single item that went into this arrangement. Once I get done, I add up my subtotal column all the way down to the bottom, and we come up with a total cost to our customer. And this tells us what we should actually be charging. And you can see in this one, my total cost was $98.50. And that's kind of an odd number. So what I did is I rounded it up to $99.99. .99. And we consider this a uh, 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 thing called uh, psychological price points and basically what it says is that customers will actually pay a little bit more or a little bit less depending on uh, the way they think about numbers and so in this case since we're at $98.50 it actually makes sense for us to charge $99.99 because that's a psychological price point so that's what we're actually going to be charging here um, now you can also see the retail cost I put up here is the cost that we're charging our customer. And we've done a lot of different calculations to figure out what it actually takes for us to be able to support everything we do. So from the labor to all of the different operating costs, our rent, 
our power, our utilities, everything. And we figured out that we need to charge at least um, for, and it's gonna vary for each business, but we need to charge at least a four times markup on whatever the cost to us was. So these numbers and the, the retail cost actually reflect that. Now, if, if you were in a situation where somebody actually gave you the numbers, um, which is pretty common if you're doing a competition, they'll actually tell you the retail cost, so you don't have to figure those things out. Um, but you do still wanna list it like this, because you can see it's really easy to tell my, what I'm doing with my math. I have a certain number of units, what their retail cost was, and then multiplied out uh, subtotal all the way down. Alrighty. So now the last thing I wanna talk about really quick here is the difference in between these three arrangements. And we had a lot of, a lot of questions about What's the difference in between a bud vase? What's the difference in between a mixed bunch vase or um, sometimes they call them mixed bud vases? Um, and then what's the difference in between just a normal vase arrangement? And really, the only difference is based on size. Typically, you'll find that bud vases are uh, a single flower, a single major flower, with a little bit of greenery and a little bit of filler flower, often with a bow, but it doesn't have to have a bow. Um, there's a lot of different plays that you can do on this. Um, a bunch vase has multiple flowers in it. So we're looking at a couple different flower types. Um, all of it kind of makes a harmonious unit, but you'll often find that the vase is actually slightly larger. So let me show you the actual difference here with the two vases. And you can see for the one that I have here with the tulip in it, uh, the size of the vase is actually pretty darn small. For the one that has these spray roses and the, the really pretty uh, spider mums, it's slightly bigger. Now. For bud vases, uh, you always want to use what we call the rule of thumb, and it's literally your thumb. So whenever you look for a vase, you should be able to fit your thumb into it, and that, that really means that you're going to be able to use it. If you find vases that are smaller than your thumb, you're really choosing the wrong vase for the situation that you're working with. Um, for the mixed uh, bunch vases, uh, you just want it to be slightly larger. Really, we're just adding a couple more flowers in there, and you need to make sure you have enough space to be able to put all of those flowers in. You can see with this larger one, with the gladiolus, um, it, you know, the problem just gets slightly larger. So we're looking at a diameter that's about, you know, maybe about four inches or so. Um, and that's going to mean we can add a lot more flowers to this arrangement. And so, of course, we can charge more, too, for that. So that's really the main difference in between these three arrangements. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to call me um, or email me at tonyjr at sparksflorist.com. My phone number is 775-358-8500, extension 103.